Hi, scholars. Today we're going to talk about lesson six of our CKLA um, unit on ancient Greek civilizations. And this time we're learning about Athens and the olive tree. CKLA Knowledge 3, Lesson 6. Our purpose for listening is to listen to find out if your predictions are correct about how the city-state of Athens got its name. <coughs> Far from the city-state of Sparta, another group of Greeks found the ideal or perfect place to build yet another city-state. That high hill will be the perfect place to build a city around, these Greeks said. There is also a good harbor for boats just a short distance. <clears throat> what is a harbor? Hmm. Why did the ancient Greeks want to build their city-state near a good harbor? Hmm. Almost all Greek cities were built around high hills. That way, if an enemy tried to attack the lower areas of the city, the people would climb up and gather on the high hill behind the city walls, they would be, where it would be harder for the enemy to reach them. Now that this group of Greeks had found just the place they were looking for, they needed a name for their city. One of the Greeks, one of the Greek stories tells us that when the Greeks were trying to decide on a name for their new city, an amazing thing happened. Two of the gods appeared to the people and spoke to them. The first appeared, the first appearance came when the Greeks were gathered at a nearby harbor. The huge muscular figure of Poseidon rose up from the sea. Now, remember what was Poseidon the god of? We said the sea and the earthquakes. The and You're correct. Good. All around him, dolphins leaped and played in the waves. Seabirds circled in the air around his towering head and shoulders that seemed to almost reach the clouds. Hear me, mor hear me little mortals, Poseidon boomed. Now, mortals are humans and do not live forever. The gods were believed to be immortal, which means they would live forever. But even those farthest from the shore could hear his loud voice. You would be wise to honor me above all the gods and goddesses. For as long as the sea... You would be wise to honor me above all the gods and goddesses, for as lord of the sea, I can bring you good luck in your fishing. Now think, what does it mean to honor someone? Think, would good luck in fishing be important to the ancient Greeks? Think, if you said yes, seafaring was important to them and fish provided them with food. Good job. He lifted his vast hands and said, look, Hundreds of fish leaped from the waves and sank back down again. Lowering his hands, Poseidon, who was the god of the seas and of all that crosses the seas, including the ships, continued, I can also bless the safety of your fishermen while they ride upon my waves and see to it that the ships in which your merchants trade moved swiftly, which means very quickly, and smoothly to distant shores and back home again. Now, what are merchants? Think for a minute. If you say people who buy, sell, or trade things, you're correct. I, Poseidon, will do all these things for you and more if you will honor me. Well, now, the people were overjoyed, which means very happy, to hear his words. And turning to one another, they said... How wonderful! We shall tell Poseidon that we will pray to him above all the other gods. Hmm. But, according to the story, before they could say this to the god of the sea, another voice called out to them. Hear me, O people, for I, too, offer a gift and a blessing. Remember, a blessing is a divine or holy gift. This time it was a female voice they heard, speaking in calm, clear, intelligent tones. Hmm. 
who do you think was speaking? Let's see. Think. You know, we make predictions when we ask questions. Sometimes the questions that I'm asking you would be questions that good readers, you, would ask yourself before you read to find out. It's fun to make predictions and then see if you're correct in your own reading. So think about that. Think about your answers inside your head. All of the people suddenly turned in the direction of this new voice and saw before them Athena, the goddess of wisdom and of war. Were your predictions about who was speaking correct? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Right or wrong? It's okay. You're making a prediction, which is a smart guess. Here we go. Athena told the people, the gift I offer you is this. She too <coughs> lifted a hand. But instead of anything as dramatic as hundreds of fish leaping up, all that appeared on the ground was one single graceful tree. It grew high and wide on the very spot where a moment before the ground had been empty. This is an olive tree, Athena said. Now, if you look on the slide there, that is an olive tree, and that's something that they farm there. The olives, remember? Here's an olive tree, and this is an actual olive tree, and these are actual olives. They're black olives there, but those are ones there, Greek olives. That's what they're farming. Okay? All right, so listen. The people did not want to be rude to the goddess, but they whispered to one another, She offers us one tree? It is very pretty to look at, but it is nothing compared to Poseidon's blessings. Now think, what are blessings? And which blessing do you think is better? And why? Just think to yourself right now. Just think, yeah, we'll talk. Well, hearing all, Athena smiled and said, let me tell you about this tree. One day soon, all of these lands around you, even the rocky hills beyond that, are hard to farm. They will be covered with groves and groves of these olive trees. Now remember, when Hermes found them, the goddesses Athena and Demeter were walking through the olive tree groves. A grove is like a big field of trees, okay? From these trees will come the wealth of your city, for you will eat the fruit you pick from these trees and never go hungry. The oil you squeeze from the fruit will be so delicious <clears throat> that its flavor will improve anything you cook with. Fill a lamp with the olive oil, set a dry rope wick in it, and ignite it, <coughs> which means set it on fire. Smelling herbs, into, in smelling herbs into the oil and rub it into your skin, and you will be healthier and cleaner and smell sweeter. And because the oil will stay fresh in jugs and bottles for a long time, you can ship it to other lands far and near. And for many people, for many people will want to have these blessings of the olive for themselves. The tree itself will be a blessing too. For in its shade, you will find shelter from the heat of the summer sun and from the cold rains of winter. Think for a minute. What is shelter? If you were thinking cover or safety, a place to live maybe, or just be shelter you from, from the weather, you're right. The wood of this tree would be fine for carving, so you will never lack for bowls, plates, or furniture. The tree will live for hundreds of years, and if a fire burns it down, it will grow again from the stump that is left behind. We're talking about it. Olive tree. That's amazing. <clears throat> Athena continued, and I tell you this, as the goddess of war, the olive branch will become the symbol of peace. Pray to me when you are in danger, and I will protect you. Athena gestured to or pointed to the olive tree and said, here. 
then is food, fortune, and protection that will be the greatest blessings of your people forever if you choose to honor me. Think, which gift do you think these Greeks will choose? Think to yourself, making a prediction. You can answer by thinking, I predict that the Greeks will choose the gift of blank. Well, now, the people thought about what Poseidon and Athena had offered and came to a decision. They told the god of the sea, Great Poseidon, you have offered us wonderful things. We will always offer prayers to you and be grateful to you for the riches of the sea. However, much you choose to share. Excuse me, I'll back up again. However much you choose to share them from your great and generous heart. But we will be the people of Athena and her olive tree. Ah. Were your predictions about how Athens got its name correct? Olive trees still grow in abundance in Greece today. Hmm, but it is named after a person, isn't it? To Athena, the people said, to show our devotion or loyalty to you, we will name our new city Athens in honor of you and your blessings. And that, the story tells us, is how these Greeks came to call their city, Athens. Hmm. If Athens, question, if Athens had chosen Poseidon's gift, what might have been different about the city? Think about it. Great job making predictions. I hope you've enjoyed the story of Athens and the olive tree.